So, people, here again with another little video, but there's been a lot going on, loads of new cameras and devices that have been coming out over the last couple of weeks. And in particular, this is something which is of interest to me. Looks like a J6, walks like a J6, but it's just not a J6. It's just everything that the GX6 should have been. But here we are. I mean, they brought out the S9. Was it the S9? Oh my God. A full frame, small camera. That's like an oxymoron. You know, why didn't they make it in with micro four thirds? Then it would have been completely small and completely interesting having a small kind of form factor with a giant lenses on it, it makes no sense to me. It has some good features, um, but definitely not something which I would be interested in. And Blackmagic's brought out a loot box camera. I think it's very good for people who are going in that kind of lane as well. I think it's a very interesting camera. And Canon's released a the C400, which is way above my punching weight. It's not something which I need to jump on right now. I'm shooting on the G86, and I love this camera. It's micro four thirds. It it's packed with features in terms of recording formats, and it has a fan, which some of these other new cameras do not have um, and it records in Blackmagic B-Raw which I like to use especially when I'm using DaVinci Resolve. Now G87 what are the main features on there which would tempt me to upgrade from my G86? Hmm Internal recording, ProRes, not really, because not just ProRes, ProRes Raw. I like the idea that you can internal record Raw, but I'm a DaVinci user, and I'm a diehard DaVinci user, and I was hoping and praying that they were going to make Video Assist work with the G86, on the day, literally, when I asked the question, they did release it, and this was in New when I was in New York. And if I did know, I would have got it there and then, the G86. But I waited, and it did come in the end. So, the G87. Mm. The G87 is a very, a very interesting camera. Let me just pause for a second. Let's go. The other great feature about this device is that you can do internal 32-bit Recording, which is good, but you still need a device to do that 32-bit recording. So I don't really see it as internal 32-bit recording because you need an external device in order to do that. I'm using the DJI um, Wireless Pro 2, which records 32-bit, not in the camera, but on its device and I think in layout is to me it's kind of the same workflow maybe just one extra step nothing amazing there for me anyway that's why I say the la the labs I, I like the labs thing I'm hoping that they do an upgrade for the GH6 so 
the labs work on the GH6 as well, because I'm sure most of these features could have worked on the GH6. That's why the GH7 has got a little sticker on it saying GH7. Otherwise, you would have thought it was a GH6. I'm sure the internals can handle it. But they say it's different. I don't know. Maybe it is. But the labs, I like I like it. It's pretty cool. Um, it's not something which would make me want to buy a whole new camera for, to be quite honest. And I think the other feature which is quite interesting is obviously the, the focus. The autofocus. I'm using autofocus right now with a, with a lens and it's tracking me. And I think it's focusing pretty good in the right conditions, controlled conditions. As well as that, I got a PD movie which helps to focus using LiDAR and you can use your cine lenses. So that works with this G86 as it is. And I'm considering getting the DJI um, Focus Pro, which works very well and makes not just one camera work um, and have good photo focus, but if you've got something like a Blackmagic Cinemark Pocket 4K as well, which is a micro four thirds camera, it helps it to photo focus quite well. So here's my dilemma. Do I get a device which makes all my cameras with poor full of focus have great full of focus or do I expand my Lumix family which I have like two other Lumix cameras as well already um, do I expand them and, and, and get a GH7 to go with the GH6 so studio setups for mobile camera shots you know, are in the same kind of uh, DNA, you know, the control system, the interface would be all totally familiar to me, but with the extra added bonus of that secured focus, uh, which I won't need to rig out a device, need to rig out a device to, to make it happen. But my cinema lenses still won't have all focus. So, there lies my dilemma. Great thing is that if you know you purchase this camera without the lenses, you know you send it, sell it, save yourself like five hundred or whatever quid. If you have micro four third lenses already, you 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 know you're already in a nice ecosystem, so you don't need to worry about all that kind of stuff. So what? would attract someone like me who owns a GH6 to make the leap to a GH7. Is it worth it? I don't know. I think it's a nice compact with all the features which I would have wanted. Plus you got this other thing with the, the ARRI log. Fain stops the dial dynamic range which is really attractive as well but I don't know if it's very necessary for me I'm just hoping that there's a new update for the J6 so it's a long while before they come out We've got like two months at least I think uh, Well, two months is a long while to kind of brew over if it's a very good buy. But the focus is really cool. But I would want that kind of focus on my anamorphic lenses as well, which is not possible without an external LiDAR device. So... I'm thinking going around in circles. Is it a good camera? I think it's a brilliant camera. If you haven't got a G86 already, you can go G86. I suggest saving yourself, uh, you know, a, a couple of grand, 
well not a couple of grand, at least a grand, you know, and buy the DJI Full of Focus um, Pro and use that system. And therefore you will have autofocus on your cine lenses, not on your photo lenses. So it's kind of a toss up. It depends what kind of stuff you're shooting and what kind of lenses you're using will determine if you will go for the Lumix GX7 or maybe just getting a device which helps your cine lenses become automatic. You know, the cine primes are really nice. Makes the images really look good. But like I said, it all depends what kind of stuff you're shooting. That's my thoughts on the G87. Good. It's a good product where they brought out Lumix just to slap everybody in their face. He said that Micro Four Thirds is dead. I'm all in with the Micro Four Thirds. I'm not looking to get a full frame camera. I don't want a ton of big, giant, heavy lenses lugging around wherever I have to go or even, and if, if it is the case that, you know, I want some kind of full frame scenario, I'll get a lens booster, you know, and just hire some full frame lenses and get an extra stop of light. So, you know, there are ways without literally biting a bullet so yeah, good on you Lumix, but I hope you do an update for the GH6 so you give us some new features like the Lab app, which you're currently only applying to the S5-2s and the S5-2x and the G, G9-2. I think you should um, at least you know, put it on a G86. Um, that's what I think. Anyway, it's just a short little kind of rant. Uh, my views on the G87, new, new camera from Lumix, just launched today, the 5th of May. No, 5th of June. Ah, oh, 5th of June. Nah, birthday's around the corner. Anyway, that's all for me today. Hope you enjoyed that and take care and leave a comment and like and subscribe.